today's news. Teen charge in 33,000. Portmore burglary. Four face six million bank fraud charges in Portland. Prime Minister defends use of state of emergency in response to international criticism. And DCP Richard Stewart, new head of JCF crime and security portfolio. Details coming right up. Are you tired of browsing all over the latest happenings in Jamaica? Discover it right here on Jamaica News Online TV YouTube channel. Foreigner home and you want to be in touch with the happenings in Jamaica? Guess what? 6 p.m. Ask and you shall receive, guys. So if you are watching this video, like, subscribe, comment, or share, hit that subscribe button. And remember to comment below with your thoughts. Guys, make sure you come back again and again to watch our videos. Construction worker Antoine Robbins, 18, has been charged with larceny for allegedly breaking into a Gregor Park home in Portmore, St. Catherine, and stealing $33,000 worth of items. Robinson allegedly entered the woman's house through a window about 7.20 a.m. while she was dropping her son at school on Friday. Robinson, who lives in Glenville Lane in Gregor Park, was apprehended by citizens and handed over to the St. Catherine South Police. In a separate case in Portland, three men have been charged with simple larceny, unauthorized access to an account, and conspiracy to defraud an incident at a bank in the parish capital, Port Antonio, between August 20 and August 26. The accused are 35 year old mechanic Dwayne Campbell, 27 year old Davin Brown, and 27 year old taxi operator Omar Weber. The police allege that a woman claiming to be an account holder contacted the bank and requested money be transferred from her personal account to five other account holders who are also members of the bank. The money amount to 5.7 million was later withdrawn from the account. An investigation was launched and Campbell Brown and Weber were later arrested. Prime Minister Andrew Honus again defending his administration's continued use of state of emergency as crime fighting tool following criticisms from an international body. The Inter-American Commission on Human Rights this week called to the Jamaica government to ensure that measures used to fight and prevent crimes are implemented in accordance with international human rights standard. In directly addressing the concern, Mr. Holness agreed that everything must be done to protect the rights of all citizens and asserted that this has been reinforced to members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The Prime Minister speaking in Kingston on Friday with no global convention to support Jamaica in responding to armed organized violence, the state must do what it must do to stem such incidents. A state of emergency was declared in Clarendon last month in response to gun attack at Cherry Tree Lane, during which eight people were killed and nine others wounded. Mr. Holness was speaking at the retirement function for Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitz Bailey. Deputy Commissioner of Police Richard Stewart has assumed responsibility for the crime and security portfolio in the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Stewart replaced former Deputy Commissioner Fitz Bailey, who retired after four decades in the JCF. Bailey turned 60 on Sunday and in keeping with JCF policy, became retired on that day. Making the appointment, the JCF described him as a seasoned officer with over 30 years of service who brings a wealth of experience to the role. It's said that he is credited with transforming the administrative arm of the JCF modernizing training programs and playing a key role in securing ISO 9001 certification for the force. His leadership in reshaping police training at the National Police College of Jamaica has garnered international recognition, positioning the JCF as a leader in law enforcement training. He holds a Master 
of Science in Accounting, a Bachelor's Degree in Accounting and Management, a Bachelor of Laws Degree from the University of West Indies, as well as a Certificate of Legal Education obtained at the Norman Manley Law School. He was called to the bar in 2011. The JCF noted that his appointment to the crime and security portfolio comes at a time when Jamaica continues to face significant crime challenges and it is expected that his extensive background in both operational command and strategic leadership will contribute to the ongoing efforts to enhance public safety. Guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment down below.